Volcanoes speak volumes. Powerful, terrifying, spectacular, each eruption is a window into the earth beneath our feet. Volcanoes fire our imagination. They inspire myths and legends and tempt our curiosity out beyond the confines of our world. And volcanoes create even as they destroy. A volcano is the product of a shifty planet. From deep inside the Earth, the destruction bursts forth, rivers of lava and clouds of ash. As if that's not Earth-shaking enough, our fractured planet also shudders with internal contortions. Earthquakes, generated by some of the same global forces that cause volcanoes. It's the ultimate show and tell when the Earth reminds us that its serenity has been a cover-up of gigantic proportions. One reminder arrived in the year 79 AD, high above the Italian towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Mount Vesuvius blew its top. Clouds of hot ash rained down on the towns. Even worse, Vesuvius unleashed poison gases. Hot mud and flowing ash made a glowing avalanche. People fell in their tracks. A way of life was buried for all time. Archaeologists working nearly 2,000 years later discovered the victims. Perhaps none is more poignant than the faithful soldier found still guarding his post. At Pompeii, even the carbonized remains of food, like bowls of walnuts, were locked inside the vaults of time. Across the bay from Pompeii, the future historian Pliny the Younger watched in despair as the city was destroyed. He recorded the fate of his uncle, Pliny the Elder, who tried to observe the eruption, but like so many others, was overcome by poisonous fumes. For every active volcano, there are many more that slumber dormant. Mount St. Helens in the American Northwest was one such place. For 123 years, forest grew and animals thrived on Mount St. Helens' peaceful slopes. Such peace can be deceptive. Nineteen eighty four, Krafla in Iceland. Five thousand citizens had to be evacuated as lava threatened the village. More lava flowed each day than water pours over Niagara Falls. When the earth erupts, it often quakes too. Near Krafla, the earth's face was cracked with rifts up to five miles long. But earthquakes can strike far from any erupting volcano. January 1995 brought devastation to Japan when an earthquake hurtled through the city of Kobe. The quake lasted a few seconds, long enough to bring down 100,000 buildings. Faced with such superhuman power, we have long searched for explanations. How and why do the upheavals occur? And when can we expect the next one? By the 17th century, scientists believed the Earth had a fiery core. They were getting warmer. We now know that the fire is actually molten rock from the Earth's interior. Collecting in underground chambers, the pressurized magma forces its way up and out.
But why do volcanoes and earthquakes show up where they do? The answer lies close to the surface. Our planet's thin shell lies in pieces, like parts of a global jigsaw puzzle the continents have drifted across millions of years to their present positions. The continents are just the visible surface of immense plates, chunks of the Earth's crust, driven by the planet's internal heat to move. The Earth gives its most spectacular performances where the plates touch as the continents continue to drift. When two of the massive plates rub shoulders, they may snag and try to shake loose. Earthquake. And when two plates grind together, one pushes the other beneath or alongside it. Magma at the collision zone is hotter and lighter than the nearby rock. As it rises, the hot stuff melts more rock along its way. When magma emerges, it takes a new name, lava. Mount St. Helens, 1980, a century-long catnap was over. Gas dissolved in the lava escaped with such force that the hot rock was blasted into smithereens, creating landslides of mud and ash. The eruption lasted nine hours, but in just the first two minutes, 10 million trees were flattened. a million dead trees still float in Spirit Lake, and the mountaintop is now a crater big enough to dwarf the World Trade Center. Volcanic craters often fill with rainwater. While some are beautiful and pure, others are distinctly unpleasant. When a volcano leaks sulfur dioxide and other noxious gases into the water, the lake becomes a lethal cocktail. A steaming crater is the setting for a tale of jealous love told by the Maoris of the South Pacific. Two volcano gods fought as rivals for the affections of another. They hurled lava and boiling water at each other. The duel was won by the first literally to erupt with rage. According to the legend, the vanquished volcano god went to nurse his wounds beneath the sea. He was in good company. The tellers of this tale seem to know something about the ocean floor, which we have only recently observed. There are eruptions here, too. There are even more volcanoes under the ocean than on land, 10 times more. About 250 erupt every year. Some undersea volcanoes bring life, not death. Active spots called black smokers belch gases from towering chimneys, some as tall as high-rise buildings. The gases would be deadly to most living things, yet there are animals that thrive here. Ghostly crabs, eel fish, tube worms that grow to twice the size of an average person. This food chain depends not on sunlight, but on microorganisms that can absorb sulfuric poison. It's an alien realm but it's here on Earth. For all of us, home is a planet created by seismic forces. In Siberia, volcanoes erupted one million years at a time, shaping the landscape with rivers of scorching lava. Siberia is now considerably cooler. A volcano means new earth in the making. Some undersea volcanoes rise up through the waves far from any plate edge. These are hotspot volcanoes. They form when magma punches through a weak zone in the Earth's crust. The Hawaiian Islands form like this, and a new one is on its way. It even has a name, but it'll be tens of thousands of years before tourists are playing golf on Loihi.
Once lava hardens, life can thrive. Lava tubes fill with water and then with shrimp and fish. More marine animals are quick to move in nearby. Over time, the razor-sharp ridges of lava get a new green coat. On isolated islands like Hawaii, animals adapt quickly in order to survive. Finches, blown to the islands millions of years ago, evolved into more than 50 species. Today, each species has features perfectly adapted to its own limited food source. When Earth's shakeups combine with water, the results are especially deadly. Volcanoes and earthquakes can create giant waves, tsunamis. When Mount St. Helens erupted, its explosion was just for openers. The vibrations sent a wall of water 140 stories tall surging out of Spirit Lake. But it is the coast of Japan that is most regularly menaced by tsunamis. And could a tsunami have come to the aid of the biblical leader Moses? The setting for the Red Sea parting is in an earthquake zone. And during the first stage of such a wave, the water level actually lowers. One theory is that the Israelites rushed to safety just ahead of a tsunami's massive surge. Indonesian Hindus take out an insurance policy against the destructive energy of volcanoes. They place a statue of Shiva, god of destruction and creation, on many of the country's mountaintops. Volcanoes may cause mayhem, but they also yield riches. Volcanic ash is full of nutrients from deep within the earth fertilizer for crops, up to three harvests a year in these rice fields, and fertilizer for grapes growing even on the slopes above Pompeii. Vino Vesuvio? Gems, too, sparkle from the depths. As molten magma cools, the stuff of nightmares is transformed to the stuff of dreams, rubies, peridot. Garnets and gold can all be found inside volcanoes. And there's sulfur, crystallized from sulfur gas, the reason most volcanoes smell like rotten eggs. Although sulfur can be deadly, we've been mining it for centuries and using it to make rubber more durable in the process called vulcanization. In Japan, life can be a moving experience, but the nation also harnesses the heat of Earth's fiery nature. Here, a cookout can mean frying your eggs on lava, and volcanic mud puts a whole new complexion on things. Japanese sufferers of rheumatism, arthritis, asthma, and even stomach ailments bury themselves in hot volcanic sand, legendary for its healing properties. But in Japan, people aren't the only ones who are happy to take the heat. Even these macaques take advantage of natural hot springs warmed by volcanic heat far below in Earth's internal plumbing system. Sometimes that plumbing blows sky high. The world's tallest geyser could have rained down on the top of the Empire State Building. Boiling hot and full of noxious gases, the vents called fumaroles appear to be devoid of life. But living things can adapt even here. Bacteria are alive and well in spite of the heat. Born deep inside volcanoes, they lie dormant until an eruption blasts them out. For larger living things, too, a volcano may be home. Volcano rabbits live on four active volcanoes near Mexico City. 
with fewer than 600 known to exist, they are some of the rarest animals in the world. Perhaps one got away. The Aztecs believe they saw their small-eared rabbit in the shadows of the moon. Life on Earth is under threat when our planet rocks and rolls. A Mexican myth claims that after five creations of the world and four destructions by fire, hurricane, flood, and jaguar, this world will be shaken to bits by an earthquake. Folklore, but far from far-fetched, the planet has been quaking for as long as we can remember. Earth takes some of her best shots at the state of California, the meeting point of two rocky wrestling plates. In 1906, the San Francisco quake sent the entire city on a roller coaster ride that came to a crashing halt. California's quakes definitely pack a punch, but Japan bears the brunt of Earth's gyrations. One-tenth of the world's earthquakes race through here, several minor ones every week, and massive quakes averaging one per century. In 1923, Tokyo was completely devastated. No wonder the Japanese fear and revere Mount Fuji, centerpiece of their seismically active nation. Mount Fuji was believed to be the home of the sun god who protects the Japanese people. Such protection must be summoned often. Earthquakes can send cooking stoves tumbling, setting buildings on fire. In California, many buildings are fitted with shock absorbers. But they're no match for fire unleashed during a quake. Most of our buildings are still at risk, and with them, lives. The best way to save lives is to predict the Earth's next move. If only that were easy to pin down. An ancient Japanese legend says a giant catfish lies beneath the earth, pinned down by a god. When the catfish wriggles from his grasp, the earth quakes. Predicting the earth's next moves with any certainty eludes our grasp as yet. Chinese observers may have a clue. Before one earthquake, turtles jumped out of the water, tigers stopped in their tracks, and a panda held its head and moaned. It seems that animals have finer sensors than we do as yet. But at least our ability to measure Earth's seismic shakeups has grown in other leaps and bounds. Today, when an earthquake hits, the Richter scale is just one of the ways we take its measure. In the aftermath of Mount St. Helens, scientists found plenty to measure. A dome of magma in the crater matched the moon cycle, swelling and shrinking with the lunar tides. By recording the dome's activity, scientists could predict 17 further eruptions at Mount St. Helens. They used laser light to detect tiny amounts of ground movement, a technique so accurate, it's like being able to measure the width of a coin from a passing plane. To really know a volcano, scientists get closer than most of us would like. Thomas Jagger was an early volcanologist. In 1912, he built the observatory on Mount Kilauea, Hawaii. And you can't get much closer than this. Morris and Katia Kraft studied more than 300 volcanoes filming eruptions around the world. Volcanology is a very dangerous business. The Krafts were both killed in an eruption of one of the volcanoes they had come to study.
There are alternatives to direct human observation of volcanoes. Dante is an eight-legged robot equipped with video transmitters. In 1994, this Dante entered a lofty inferno, Mount Spur in Alaska, an active volcano. The journey took two days. The heat and gases would have killed a human observer. But no human lives were at risk. Dante sent pictures back to Anchorage where NASA researchers sat safely indoors. On the return trip, Dante was overwhelmed, not by lava, but by mundane mud. From robots to radar, volcanoes are under our watchful eye. Mount Etna in Italy has had its measurements taken by radar from space using some of the same technology we use to gaze at more distant volcanoes. This is Mars, an assimilated flyover of a region the size of the United States based on actual images. The entire chain of Hawaiian islands could fit inside this one immense crater in the heart of the volcano Olympus Mons. Venus, too, features a fantastic volcanic landscape that is alive only with color. According to myth, the planets Mars, Venus, and Jupiter were gods. Vulcan was the god of fire. After a violent argument, Jupiter hurled Vulcan to Earth, where he unleashed his fiery havoc. He gave his name to the volcano. Legendary volcanoes stretch across time and the planet. In Java, the Hindu faithful believe that the god Brahma created the world and took as his dwelling the heart of a volcano one of Java's fire mountains. Once a year, homage is paid to him in a festival based on an ancient event in Hindu tradition. When a royal couple prayed to Brahma for children, he agreed to grant their wish if they promised to give him a son in return. When the joyful parents forgot their promise, the angry god snatched the child and took him to dwell with him deep inside the crater. In Ireland, St. Patrick is said to have converted much of the population to Christianity. Yet distant volcanoes may deserve some credit. St. Patrick died about a century before the new faith took hold. But the Irish conversion did coincide with catastrophes that hit the region. Failed crops and famine that the Bible may have foretold. The likely cause of the failed crops? Volcanic eruptions many miles away, probably in Iceland. Huge clouds of ash can block out the sun. After so much heat, the world grows colder. A record of the change is laid down by silent survivors, trees. If a volcano's ashy outburst has put a chill in the air, trees lay down only narrow rings, revealing a time of little growth. When lava flows, nature records, and it recovers. Mount St. Helens has given us a glimpse not only of our planet's destructive force, but of its healing power. Deer mice were found on the mountain slopes the very first summer after the blast, too far from unharmed land to have walked in. They had survived. There were other survivors, too. Pocket gophers emerged above Spirit Lake. Their deep burrows and sheltered hollows had saved them from the eruption's terrific blast. The gophers' groundwork brought buried seeds and roots to the surface, where they sprouted and grew. 
elk arrived. Venturing into devastated terrain, scientists had believed such large mammals would never inhabit. At Mount St. Helens, a decade later, there are fertile islands in a former blast zone. A new forest sprouts. But there is even more here than meets the eye. New bacterial relatives of Legionnaire's disease were discovered, 30 in all and a new form of flu called red zone fever infected scientists. There were even more surprising finds, bacteria that could be related to the first living things on Earth. Volcanoes may throw open a window not only to Earth's rocky internal life, but to tiny life forms that dwell deep within its layers. Despite such revealing ways, our planet remains a mystery. As its surface skin cracks and quakes and volcanoes burst forth, we only get a brief glimpse into its turbulence. The Earth retains its most shattering trait of all, unpredictability. For all our watching, researching, and recording, we still never know when the Earth will next reveal its deepest secrets. Eyewitness Museum, created by combining traditional filmmaking techniques with state-of-the-art graphics. Stripping away the mysteries of nature and science to reveal the essence of each subject. Bringing the world into sharp focus. The making of Eyewitness. The distinct style of the eyewitness books is the basis for each of the programs. Each half-hour episode is based on a book title. The eyewitness book's visual style gives the program makers a starting point and a challenge. The challenge of transferring clarity and super-realism into moving images and sound. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of Volcano. In Volcano, we wanted to show the effect of an earthquake by shooting a vase of flowers shattering in slow motion. To do this, we used a small vibrating motor and a helping hand from the art department. Now, for the actual smashing of the vase, the studio had to be cleaned and reset. The camera we used films at very high speed, and it's important that everything is ready at the same time. Stand by. And the director is on hand with a few extra petals. And the final sequence shows all the effort was worthwhile. For the exploding glass of orange juice, a small high-explosive device was inserted into the base of a special glass. 
The director took no chances and sat well to the back of the studio. Once the wires were connected, all it took was a small electric impulse to shatter the glass. Apart from an orange shower, the effect was achieved. You can never be too careful when glass is flying. To show the effect of an earthquake, we went to a different kind of studio, a motion control studio. We built a scale model of a Roman courtyard, through which a special camera travels. Its movements are controlled by a computer. Each movement is made using a small joystick and is remembered by the computer. Once the required camera move has been achieved, it's just a simple case of recording it. In order to show the destruction of an earthquake, the courtyard had to be destroyed. Luckily, the model had been built with this in mind. And with the camera this close, every detail had to be just right. The final shot shows the eerie devastation the team were looking for. The final sequence only lasts a few seconds, but had taken two weeks to prepare and a whole day to film.